Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson where we are going to start Unit 6 talking about arrays. And specifically today's lesson is one-dimensional arrays. <clears throat> So the goal of today's lesson is just to understand what one-dimensional arrays are in Java and then be able to um, easily traverse elements in the one-dimensional array. So let's get into it. What is an array? You might have seen this before in other coding classes. Maybe you haven't. Um, but an array is a special type of object in Java that can hold a fixed number of items of the same data type. And that's kind of a lofty definition. There's a lot going on in there. It's a special type of object. Um, it's not exactly an object like we would think of it as an object, you know, with our object creating class and all of that. It's a very special type of data structure. It can hold a fixed number of items. That's going to be important is it's a fixed number of items and they all have to be the same data type is the other important piece of that definition there. And uh, why would we want this? <laughs> why do we have this data structure? Um, called an array? Well, it's going to lead to simpler code. Um, if we have a lot of data of the same type, um, in order to deal with data in our Java program so far, we've had to create variables. And we can create objects to hold data. Um, but if we have like a lot of objects or a lot of integers or a lot of strings, we would have to make a variable for each of them. And that's just not going to be very practical to create a lot of individual variables. Um, let's say you have a list of four songs, okay? just four songs that you want to um, keep track of. If we have four songs, Right now, we would have to make those four songs individual variables, right? We could make a we can make a song object, and like each song has a title, an artist. Like we can hold data like that in a single variable, so say with object. But if we just have four song titles, right? A string, four strings, we have to still create four individual variables, and we could do that, okay? Right? Here's our example, four individual strings, song one, song two, three, and four, um, and then four different um, song titles, okay? And then there's the visual representation of what this looks like, okay? It's going to look like, you know, four songs, <laughs> four individual variables. Now, imagine if we had hundreds or even thousands of songs, okay? It would be so difficult to keep track of everything. Okay? You can see a pattern, song one, song two, song three, song four, but you have to create a line of code for each of those. Not only do you have to create a line of code for each of those to actually make the variable, but then on top of it, you have to keep track of everything, right? Song four is the song red. Like, it's impossible to keep track of. So we have an array, okay? And I'm sorry if I kind of cut off this um, visual representation of an array. But here's how we can represent those same four songs as an array. So instead of having four individual variables, I just have one variable here, songs. Right? That's going to be my reference variable. That's going to be my array is songs. And in songs, I have four variables being stored. Okay? And you can see there, those are our four songs. Okay. So that songs represents our array reference variable. So now I just have one variable to keep track of, and that's going to represent all of my songs. Each song in this array is called an array element. So our song, that is an array element. Shake it off, that is an array element. Okay, Each of those, there's four array elements there. Each array element is assigned a numerical position called an index. So in an array, they're organized by indices, indexes. They start at zero and increase by one, we say, down the list. So the first song we come across in our list is our song, and that's going to be given a numerical value of zero. Right? And then as we move through our list, it increases by one and goes all the way up. So I got zero, one, two, three. Those are my four indexes. It starts at zero and goes up by one. The length of an array can be accessed at any time using songs.length. So songs is our reference here. And dot length, it's an attribute. It's not a method, okay? So there's no parentheses, okay? That's on purpose. There's no parentheses there. It is just dot length. It's an attribute of the array. 
the last index of the array is always songs.length minus 1. Okay? So I have indices 0, 1, 2, and 3. And the length of this array is four songs. So songs.length would be four in this example. And the last index is going to be four minus one, which is three. So I can see that that's the last index in my array. Now let's talk about array creation. What's the code to actually create this array? Um, arrays can be created two ways. When you know the contents at creation and when you don't know the contents at creation. So if you know what the contents of your array are going to be, um, you use the following syntax. You're going to have the type, the data type, um, followed by two square brackets, open, closed, nothing in them. The name is going to be our reference, equals, and then in curly brackets here, you're going to put what content you have, separated by, by commas. Okay? So each array element is separated with a comma, and they all have the same data type. You cannot mix data types in an array. That's very important. Okay? So with our example here, if we had our four songs, what that's going to look like is string, because I'm storing four strings open close parentheses, songs equals, and then in those curly brackets, I have all of my songs. Okay? And because they're strings, they're in quotation marks. If they were integers, booleans, they wouldn't be in quotation marks. It's just because these are strings right now. Okay? If you don't know the contents of an array, so let's say we wanted to create an, an array of songs, but we don't know exactly what songs we're going to fill it with, you can use the following syntax. Um, again, it starts off with type, square brackets, the name of your reference, equals new, so we use that new operator, the type, again, repeated, and then now in this section, in the square brackets, we're going to actually put the length of the, in array, of the array, okay? So that new operator is used, and in the second set of square brackets, you're going to put the length. It's a fixed length when you create an array, so whatever length you want, it's the length you are, you're stuck with the whole time. <laughs> so if we want to create an array with a length of four, we would do string, open close songs equals new string, and then in the square brackets we would put four. We do not put anything in there, in those square brackets, those are left blank. We would only put the length here. Okay. You can also create, uh, declare and create on one line. Um, or declare on one line, excuse me, create on another line. And that's going to be by doing string um, songs. You can see it's just a declaration. And then set songs equal to new string for. Okay, now let's get into um, just practicing array creation. Um, so for these three problems, I just want you to write a single line creating the following arrays based on the description. If you want to pause the video and try it, and then press play when you're ready to see the answers, that works. Um, but we're just going to have these on one line, one line of code to create them. So an array called numbers for 10 integer values. That's going to look like int open close brackets, numbers equals new int square brackets with a 10 in there because there's 10 values. Okay, So again, inside those square brackets, that's the length of the array. That has nothing to do with um, like what your last indice is or anything like that. It, it is strictly the, um, the length of the array. The array. <laughs> An array called flags that holds the values true, false, true. So since we know the three values we want to put in there, we're going to use our curly bracket notation. So boolean, open, closed, square brackets, flags, equals, true, false, true, okay, inside those curly brackets. And this is all on one line. It's just kind of big, um, so it looks like it's on two lines. Um, but this is one line of code, remember. And then an array called grades that holds 50 double values. Double, open, closed bracket, grades, equals new grades, 50 in the square brackets, okay? 
So now that we've talked about array creation, let's go into um, manipulating arrays. Oh, sorry, a couple last things before we get into manipulating arrays. Um, once created, remember, the length of the array cannot be changed. It is, it is a fixed length, okay? So if I create an array called grades of 50 double values, I can't later go back and decide, oh, I want actually 55 doubles, or I want to change that to 100 doubles. I would have to make a brand new array if I wanted to do something like that. You cannot change the length of an array once it has been created. When it's created with the new operator, the array is filled with the default value of whatever type it was created with. Okay. Um, so to remind you of what default types are for int is 0, double, 0, 0.0, um, Boolean, the default is false, remember? And then for a string or any reference, um, any object, uh, the default is null. Okay, okay. now manipulating arrays. Um, so again, once it's created with the new operator, you can't um, modify the values using an array creation method. So what I mean by this, this, these two lines of code would cause an error. So let's say I made a new array called grades and I made it with the new operator, right? New five grades. I can't go and then fill though that array using that creation method saying grades equals this. This is an error. This whole thing is an error. Um, instead, what I have to do in order to access or modify an array's contents is use the indices. Okay, so let's say I create int grades equals new int five, five grades, right? So grades is our reference and I it's filled with the default value of int, which is zero, okay? Each of those has an index, okay? Starting at zero, going up by one. Um, and then from there, if I wanted to change any of those, I have to use the index, okay? So let's say I wanted to make the first grade 89. What I would have to do would be grades, my reference, and then in square brackets, I would put the index that I wanna access or modify. In this case, I wanna modify index zero and set it equal to 89. So that would be the line of code that makes that happen. If I wanted to change index one to a 99, that's what that's gonna look like index two, index three, and index four. That's how I change all of those and actually put data into my array after it's already been created. Okay. So whenever an array is created, whether it's used with a new operator or even if it's used with the curly brackets and set values, after it's been created in order to access, so just to view it, or to modify it, in this case we're modifying the contents of an array, we need to use um, that array index. Okay. Um, we can manipulate array elements using any operators as well. Okay. So they kind of work, that array indexing works kind of like any value we would use and we can use um, any variable we would use, excuse me, and we can use the operators on them. So in this example, what are the contents of grade after the code has been executed? So let's take a look at this. So here's my array contents, it's already been created. Now what am I gonna do? Um, this says I wanna take grades zero and add five to it and then store it back in grade zero, right? So grade zero right now is 89, add five to it and then store it back in index zero. That's gonna be the contents of my array after that operation is performed, right? So just that first value is changed. After that, now I get into grades one, so that's 99, mod two plus grade zero. So grades one is 99, mod two, plus 94 because that's at grade zero, okay? And I'll do those operations. 99 mod two is going to be one, and then one plus 94 is 95, and that gets stored back in grades one, okay? So grades one is gonna get replaced here and gonna be a 95, okay? This right here, grades two equals grades three. This means takes the value of grades three and store it in grades two. So grades three, this is at index three. Remember, it's talking about the index and not the position in the list. 
well, it is the position in the list. But remember, it starts at 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is index 3. It's saying take this value and store it in place of index 2. What's in place of index 2? So index 2 gets replaced with 82. Okay, And then the last one here, grades 2 is 82. 82 plus 10 is 92, and it's saying take 92 and store it in grades 3. So that's why index 3 got changed to a 92. And those are going to be the contents of our array after this code has executed. So to access the length of an array, remember we use that um, attribute length to retrieve whatever array is calling on it. Um, we call this an attribute and not a method because it's a built-in property and it's not calling on a method. Okay? Um, versus like string name dot length, like when we want the length of a string, how many characters are in a string, we actually call on a method. And that's why it's dot length with the open close parenthesis when we're talking about a string. Not with an array, it's just dot length. Okay? No parentheses because it's an attribute. So don't let that trip you up there. Okay. So what would this print out? So if I have grades at length, the grades, the array I was just working with, it would print off a of five because there's five values. The indexes are zero through four. Okay. There's no index five. It's just zero through four, but the length, those are five values. Okay. So you got to make sure you keep those straight. Um, the following lines of code are going to call cause an array index out of bounds exception to be thrown. Okay? So array index out of bounds is exactly what it sounds like. You're trying to use an index that's out of bounds. There is no index. So if I tried using grades.length in my square brackets, um, grades.length is 5. And remember, we just said there's no index 5. So grades of 5, if we're trying to use an index that doesn't exist, you're going to get an exception to be thrown. Um, so meaning when you're running your program, you're going to get um, get a runtime error. Okay, um, Grades within square brackets negative 3, this is also an exception um, because there's no negative indices in arrays. Now this is different than other programming languages. Okay, other programming languages like Python, for instance, you can have negative, you can use negative indices. Um, it just means something a little bit different in that language. So if you see that in other languages, sometimes it's allowed, but just know in Java, you can never have negative indices at all. Okay, nowhere in there is there negative indices. So anything negative would be an error. Um, same thing with decimals. Indices are always whole number integers, starting at zero and going up from there. Um, never any decimals. So all of those are going to cause an exception to be thrown. Okay, let's get into traversing an array. Okay, Now, when we traverse an array, um, we're talking about uh, going through and either looking at the contents or modifying the contents in some way. Traversing means going through, like looking through a list, right? Looking through, looking through, looking through. So I want you to kind of visualize that as we're going through the code that's going to traverse an array. It means we're looking through an array in some fashion. Um, you use a for loop to access each item in the array. You could use a while loop. Um, Remember, those two can sometimes be interchangeable. You could use a while loop, but the most common way to traverse an array is using a for loop, and that's what we're going to stick with. Okay? Um, the variable used in the for loop header is the index. So that big for loop header that we're going to use, um, that controls what index we're on. And it's usually called i in code. Um, it can be called anything, j, k. Um, any single letter is sometimes used to represent the array index, um, but usually I, so we're just going to call it I. And then inside the for loop, you can either access or modify the contents of the array using that index. In this case, I, but again, kind of whatever variable you use in your header there. Okay, so let's say I just want to display the contents of my array. So I have an int square brackets my array. Okay, that's what it's going to be called. I didn't show the creation of it. It's some 
some array, right? Whenever we traverse an array, we always want to make sure that we use code um, that works for any size array, which means I don't know the length of my array right now. So if I wanted the length, I have to use my r a r r dot length right, to access it. Um, and that's just good coding practice, remember, to try to not code um, hard numbers into our, um, into our programming. Okay. So I have this array of integers. This is what my loop header is going to be. Okay. And this is so common that eventually it's just going to look like, yes, this is traversing through an array. That's what your brain is going to think. So it starts off int i equals 0, meaning we're starting at index 0. We're going up to, but not including the length um, of the array, okay? So remember, like with my grades, right, the length was 5, but I didn't have an index 5. So I want to go up to, but not including that last index. If I include that that um, length, if I do this in equal to, that's going to give me an out of bounds error, okay? So it's i less than the length of the array, and then i plus plus, because you're going to increase by 1 each time you go through the list, okay? So again, this header is so common that when you start to see this header, I want you to think I'm going through the array one index at a time starting at zero, okay? Um, we could trace through these arrays, this code, like we've been tracing through loops before, but traversing through an array is so predictable, it's more time consuming to actually trace and have like, okay, i is zero, then i becomes one, okay, then i becomes two. You're welcome to do that like we've been working with loops in the past, okay? but that's just going to be very time consuming. So when you see this loop header, I want you to think, okay, this is talking about uh, traversing through an array one index at a time. Okay. And then if I just want to display the contents, I'll do my system.println, and then in my square brackets, I'll use my index i. Okay, So it starts at 0, then it goes up to 1, then 2, then 3, and then 4, and it stops at that last index right before the length. Okay, So this would be traversing to display, to display contents. Um, okay, let's say I want to traverse for array creation. Okay, so I created an, a new array of integer values, 50 of them. And I want to put all multiples of 2 into the array starting at 0. So that means I want to put 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so on and so forth, um, to fill my entire array of 50 values. Okay. That's a lot to do for... Um, uh, single lines of code, right? Because I could do like my ARR 0 equals 0. My ARR 1 equals 2, right? And I could go through and I could have 50 lines of code, but we always say work smarter, not harder, okay? You use a loop for this. So again, that familiar loop heading, it's going to be so familiar to you. Um, it's going to be second nature to write it. You're going to dream about it. Um, Lucky you guys. So int i equals 0, i less than my r a r r dot length, i plus plus, right? Traversing through the array starting at index 0, okay? What are you going to do? You're going to use i as an actual way to fill with multiples of 2, okay? You could introduce a new variable if you wanted to, but this is just the easier, smarter way to do it. Um, you would take one by one each element of the array and you would set it equal to i times 2. So i starts off at 0, 0 times 2 is 0. Then i becomes 1, 1 times 2 is 2. Then i becomes 2, 2 times 2 is 4. And you can see how you'll get the multiples of 4, or excuse me, multiples of 2 filling the array of integer values with just that loop. So you can use these loops. You can traverse the loop to actually add in um, um, add in values. Okay. Now we're going to get into some practice problems. I have eight practice problems here um, asking some various things that have to do with um, arrays and then traversing them. 
So this first question just wants to know what is printed. Okay, um, I have a, an array of integer values. I see them right there. Um, what is printed? Again, when you see that loop header, these are the words I want you to think. It says traverse through each element in the array. Okay, And I know it's going to traverse through each element of the array because it starts at zero. It goes up to, but not including the length. And I increases by one each time. Whenever you see those three things, think, okay, I'm going to traverse through each element of the array. Okay, You don't have to actually write out, okay, I is zero. Let's trace through when I is zero. Let's come back. Let's make I one. Let's trace through when I is one. That's going to take too much time. Try to put the code into words. So traverse through each element in the array. Then I have this if statement. Okay. What is this if statement asking? Remember that this is the array element that you are currently on. You're going to mod it by two and see if it equals zero. Okay. What does that check? Okay. What is that in words? That's checking if the element is even. Okay. Is the element even? That's the question this if statement is asking. Okay. If the element is even, what are you going to do? You're going to print it off. Okay. You're going to print off that element if it is even. Okay. Well, that makes it easy. You don't have to trace through again every time um, what I is doing and trace through and keep track of all these variables. If you can put this into words, you don't have to do any tracing at all. This says, okay, look through the array. If an element is even, we're going to print it off. What are the even elements? Two, four, and eight. Okay. So this code would print off two, four, and eight to the council. Okay. Put it into words. Okay, here's the second one. Um, same array. Um, I see the same header right? That says traverse through each element in the array. It's right there. Now I'm asking a different question. It says if I mod 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so in words, what is that checking? That's checking if the index is even. Okay, now we're checking to see if I is even. Okay, if I is even, then I'm going to print off the element. Okay, so be careful of that in your for loop. This is checking if the index is even and we print off the actual element. Okay. So using that, what are my even indexes? Okay. This starts at zero. Okay. Well, zero mod two is zero. So even though zero is not an even number, it checks out in the code. One, two is an even index. Three, four is an even index. Okay. So those underlined are my even indexes. But those elements, 2, 11, and 13, are what actually gets printed off to the screen. Okay. Okay. Traversing through arrays. Um, okay, let's look at some strings here. So I have um, an array of strings called farm. There's six farm animals in this array. Perfect. I see my familiar loop heading. Okay, i equals zero, i less than farm dot length, i plus plus. That means traverse through each element in the array. So I'm looking at each element individually at the beginning, starting at zero. And what am I checking for? I'm asking a question. If farm i dot length with those um, parentheses is greater than zero, okay, what is that asking? Farm i, that's each element. So that's saying, okay, the first element at index zero is horse. So it's saying what's horse dot length, okay? Well, horse dot length, that has a length of five, okay, right? It's asking what the, what the length of the string is at that element. And if it's greater than four, okay, what are you gonna do? Print off the element, okay? So the question, the if statement, if the word is longer than four letters, print off the element, okay? Not equal to four, greater than four, so five or higher, okay? Print off the element. Okay, I don't even have to trace through. I go through and I'm like, okay, which words are longer than four letters? Horse, chicken, sheep, those are the three words that are gonna get printed to the council. Okay. So again, because farm I 
that is a string, okay? That's accessing a string, and then we can use a string method on it, okay? That's why I use dot length with the open close parentheses is because I'm using that method on an actual string. Okay, here's another one. Farm, okay, same six, six animals, but wait, the header is different, okay? This is the first time the header is different. Let's think about what this is saying, okay? Now it says int i equals farm dot length minus one, okay? I just said I had six farm animals here, okay? Six minus one is five. So it's saying, this for loop is saying start i at five, okay? And then, as long as i is greater than or equal to zero, i goes down by one. So i starts at five, it goes to four, three, two, one, and zero, including zero there, okay? So what is that doing? In words, what is this, what is this uh, for loop doing to my array? You're traversing through each element in the array backwards, okay? So this is how you traverse backwards. So you start at the last index, and the last index is always length minus one. You go down to zero, including zero, and you're subtracting one every time, okay? So five, four, three, two, one, zero. You're going through the farm backwards. So put it into words, right? Traverse through each element in the array backwards, which means I'd be starting with sheep, okay? So farm i, the first index that I'm going through is index five, which is sheep, and it says dot substring dot equals, okay? So I'm using my string methods because again, I'm, sheep is a string. So dot substring, one comma two, that's the second letter right? Because strings are also zero indexed. Zero, one, two, three, four. So that's saying start at index one up to, but not including index two in a string. So that's just this letter H. If it's equal to O, you're going to do something, okay? In this case, sheep, the second letter is not equal to O, so I'm not going to do it with sheep. But it asks if the words second letter is equal to O, print off the word, right? If the word second letter is equal to O. And again, this code looks uh, looks a little crazy, right? Crazy, crazy. So that's why, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. That's why I say put it into words, okay? Because now, once you put it into words, you're like, okay, I know what that means. Okay, sheep, no, um, chicken, no, goat, okay? I would print off goat. Um, pig, no, cow, I would print off cow, and horse, yes, I would print off horse. And I would go in that order because I'm going through the array backwards. So this goat, cow, horse, goat, cow, horse is what gets printed to the screen. Okay. Yeah, traversing arrays. Okay, let's write some code. Um, this says finish the code so the sum of the elements in the array is printed. So again, array elements are not shown, but I'm going to call it ARR. Um, that's actually kind of common for the AP exam. The, that's the shorthand they use for um, an array is ARR. Um, and then I have a variable called sum. Starts at zero, and then eventually I'm going to print what the sum is. So first, if I want to add up all of the elements, I need to traverse through all of the elements. So that's step one, is writing off a traversal through the array, which I use my for loop. The next step is to add the element to the sum and to make it cumulative. Okay? So those are my two steps. Those are the two lines of code I'm going to write. First is the traversing. Okay, It doesn't matter if I go backwards or forwards, so the standard is just to go through the array starting at index zero. That's how I traverse through the array. And then I'm going to add the element to the sum. Okay? And remember to access the element, ARR in brackets, I put the I, and then I accumulate it to sum. Okay? So the sum is, yeah, there we go. 
um, finish the code so the sum of the odd elements in the array is printed. So this is very similar to the last code, except I'm going to throw in a question asking if it's odd first. Okay. So still traverse through the array. Now I need to check if the element is odd first. And if it is odd, I'm going to add it to sum. Okay. If it's not odd, then I'm not doing anything with it. So I don't have an else statement. I'm just checking to see if it's going to be odd and then add it to sum if it is. So there's my traversal. Traverse through the array. Okay. Check if it's odd. Okay. So how do I check if, um, if an element is odd? If the element is odd, I use the element with in the brackets i for each element. Check if each element is equal equal if when you mod it by two, it's equal to one, because if it is, then it's odd, okay? If it is, then it's odd, and then you're going to add the element to sum, okay? Okay, two more examples left. What is the value of count after the code has executed? Okay, let's see what we're doing here. Um, I have count equals zero, and I have an array of numbers called nums. Now, in my for loop, my for loop looks a little different, okay? It starts at zero. It says it goes up to nums.length minus one, okay? That means I start at index zero, and I'm going up to um, the last index or excuse me, so what's the length of this is six, right? <laughs> the length of this is six. If I didn't have this minus one here, I would go up to index five, okay? Up to, but not including six. So I would go up to five. Since I have six minus one, that says five. It's my last index, but it's I less than five, which means it goes up to, but not including my last index there. So it's just going to go up to 12. So 4, 8, 5, 11, and 12 are what my um, traversal is going to go through. Okay, And I'm going to go up one at a time, I++. So that's a little strange. right? Let's see why, why it does that. It says traverse through each element in the array except the last one. Okay, And the reason for that is this code down here. Now you see in square brackets, I have I plus 1 and then I just have an I, okay? So the reason we had to change our header was so that we don't get an array index out of bounds, okay? So I said that this is gonna go through each element except the last one, meaning the last index it's gonna go through, I is going to be, um, it's gonna be four, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, yeah. Six minus one is five, up to but not including five means that I is gonna be four. That's gonna be the, largest i is going to be, okay? Now, if I use that here, 4 and 4, it says 4 plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5, so this is going to be talking about the element at index 5, whereas this is still going to be talking about the element at index 4. Now, that's okay because I have an index 5, but notice if we were to make this a 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, and I don't have an index six. So all of a sudden, I would have an array index out of bounds because I don't have an index six. And that's why we had to modify our header so that we traverse through each element in the array except the last one. It's because I have an I plus one. And I'm trying to access an element um, that is one above whatever I is, okay? So using the example I just said here, um, if I is four, four plus one is five, so it's saying if the element at index five is greater than the element at index four, you're gonna say count plus plus, okay? So what this is checking in words, if the element next in the list is larger than the current element, you're gonna add one to count, okay? So if I starts off as zero, so if this is zero, I is zero, zero plus one is one, and this is still zero. So it's saying, okay, if the number at index, if the element at index one is larger than the element at index zero, add one to count, okay? And in this case, okay, four is our current index, so that's why I have it circled. Eight is the next number, okay? Is eight larger than four? 
Yes. So count is 1. Then I increases. Is 5 greater than 8? Nope. So count doesn't change. Is 11 greater than 5? Yes. So we would add 1 to count. Is 12 greater than 11? Yes. So I would add 1 to count. And then is 10 greater than 12? No. So I would not add 1 to count. And that's where my loop stops because this was the last element that I checked. I did not do 10. And it doesn't make sense to check 10 because there's no element that comes before it. Okay. So count is 3 after this code has executed. Yeah. Okay. You got to be careful of those array index out of bounds exceptions, especially when you start throwing in these i plus ones and so on and so forth. I minus ones. Okay. We'll do a lot more practice with those as we go on. But when we start doing that, we have to take that into account with how we traverse through the array. And we want to make sure that we're traversing in the proper the proper boundaries of that array. Okay, the last problem, uh, last practice problem here, and then um, we have one more thing we're going to cover. What are the contents of the array after the code has been executed? Okay, so let's go through this. Um, first line of code, the array mystery um, is five integer values. When you use that array creation, it's just with the default values of zero. The next one, index zero is going to be eight. Well, that's pretty straightforward. That's the first one in the list. Next, it says 2 plus index 0. So 2 plus 8 is going to be 10, and that's going to be stored in the first index. Good so far? If you want to try the rest of them and then come back to me, feel free. Okay, but let's keep going here. Mystery 0 is 8, mod 3. Okay, so remember, what's 8 mod 3? That's going to be 2 and you store it in the second index. Okay. So second index, we have 8, 10, 2, 0, 0. The next line, okay, it says mystery 0, which I know that element is 8, and I'm going to store it in this index. Okay, So I have my square brackets, and then I have a little problem to figure out what is that index. Well, mystery 2 has an, the element is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, so it says mystery 3 is going to be equal to 8. Okay, so at the third index, you're going to have the value of 8. Okay. And then my last loop here, it says traverse through each element backwards. Okay, um, But I should say, so it starts at the last index. It does not include 0 here. Okay. And you'll see why it doesn't include zero in a moment, but it does not include zero. Um, and then I minus minus each time. Okay. What are you going to do as you traverse? Okay. Well, you're going to start at the last element. Okay. So in this example, it would be index uh, four. And it says if I is four, four minus one is three. Index three is eight. You're going to take eight times 3, which is 24, and you're going to store it in that current index, right? So in words, take the element, so whatever element you are, take the element before it, multiply it by 3, and store it back into what you're currently on. So if I'm currently on 0, 8 times 3 is 24, so 24 gets stored as the last element in my array. Then I move on to 8. The element before 8 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 gets stored in 8's position. I traverse next. I'm at element 2. The element before it is 10. 10 times 3 is 30. Store it in place of the 2. I move on. 10, the element before it is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. So I store 24 there. And notice I don't include zero here. Okay, I don't include my zero index. Okay, I go down, I is one. Once I becomes zero, my loop stops. Okay, 
And that makes sense because if I were to go down here, if I were to actually include 0, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So I would end up with an array index out of bounds exception um, and uh, broken code. Okay, So that's why I don't include 0 in my boundary here because okay? I will get an array index out of bounds. So I do i minus 1. So be careful. So what is this last one? Well, I never ended up modifying it. So it's just an 8. Okay. It stays what it was before. Yeah. Okay. Those are eight practice problems. Um, kind of long, but, but it's good. There's a lot that goes into traversing arrays. So um, hopefully those looked okay. The last thing I want to talk about here is passing arrays to methods. <laughs> that wasn't clear. Passing arrays to methods. So in the last unit, we discussed how primitive types, as well as strings, because they're immutable, um, are passed by value, meaning you pass a copy of the argument value to a method. So any changes made to that variable in the method are not preserved. Right. So if I had a variable called um, uh, called num num in this method, and I passed it to I passed num to this method over here. Anything that happens over here does not happen to num, right? It passes the value, the copy of whatever was stored in num. It doesn't actually pass num itself. It doesn't pass the reference to that variable. It passes the value. It makes a copy and passes the value. That's how primitive types as well as strings work. And we talked about how reference types pass the reference of an object. So when in unit five, when we were talking about objects and passing objects, um, any changes made to the object are preserved. Because if you have an object here and you pass it to this method here, you're actually passing the reference. So anytime you change the object over here, it also reflects the changes are reflected in this reference over here. Okay. So those are the two ways to pass data. How do arrays work? Are, are arrays passed by value or do they pass the reference? They work like reference types. Okay? They're a special type of object, so they behave like reference types. So any ch you, when you pass an array to a method, any changes made to the array over here are also made to the array over here. Okay? And I'm going to show you a little visual of how that works with this example. <laughs> I have two examples. This one, we're passing an array. So in my main method, <coughs> sorry, I'm just coughing a little bit too much. Um, in this main method, I have a variable, an array variable called stats, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Perfect. Okay, that's what it looks, that's what you can kind of visualize in memory happening. Then I go to manipulate stats. So manipulate is the static method right down here that accepts a parameter of an array. Okay, So you can see it's accepting an array um, because of those square brackets. And it's expecting an array of integer values. Um, when you accept an array as a parameter, that's the syntax that you want to use. Um, int square brackets ARR. Um, Notice that there's nothing about what length it's expecting or anything like that. It just expects an array of integers. That's all. So we go down here. What this does is it creates a reference called ARR, and it's going to point to the same thing that stats is pointing to. Okay, That's the connection between stats and ARR here, is that they're going to point to the same um, location in memory. So they're pointing to the same array. And that's exactly how objects worked in unit five when we talked about passing objects. Arrays are going to work the same way. So here, when I go through each element of the array, while the element is not evenly divisible by three, add one to the element. Okay, That's what this whole thing manipulate is doing. That's what that whole for loop is saying. This says traverse through the array if while the element mod 3 is not equal to 0, which means while the element is not evenly divisible by 3, you're going to add 1 to the element. Okay, And you're going to do that for ARR. So starting at 30, is 30 evenly divisible by 3? Yes. 
so nothing happens to it. <laughs> so we move on to 40. Is 40 evenly divisible by 3? It is not. So the first time through the while loop, we add 1 to it. Still not evenly divisible by 3, so we add 1 to it. Now 42 is evenly divisible by 3. So we're done. With that element, we move on to the next element. 50 is not evenly divisible by 3, so I add 1 to it. Still not, oh, excuse me. Yes, it is. 51 is divisible by 3. Ooh, I'm really testing myself here. Yes, 51 is evenly divisible by 3. So then we move on to 60. 60 is already evenly divisible by 3. So move on to 70. Add 1 to it. Still not. 72 is evenly divisible by 3. <laughs> and that's the end of my array. All of that happened down here in Manipulate. And it happened to ARR, which was pointing here. Now that the method is over with, I go back up. So this is done. Okay, I manipulated it. Bam, done. And the reference, notice how the reference ARR gets erased. ARR was a local variable only. It was a local reference. So as soon as that manipulate gets done, ARR is gone. And I'm just left with stats. But notice how stats... Everything in stats was, it was changed from that method, right? Those changes we say were preserved. That's what we mean when we say changes are preserved is those changes are still there. It didn't go back to the way it was before. Those changes remain. So this loop says go through each element in the array and print off what that element is. So to the council, you'll get the contents of those arrays. And that array was changed. So there you go. Pass by reference. OK. Methods can also return an array. And that's going to be our last example here. I know this video is kind of long, but this is our last example here. OK. Um, notice how we have two methods. We have our main method. But I also have, it's called public static Boolean open close brackets, positives. So this expects an array of integer values and it returns an array of Boolean values. Okay, so that is the syntax for, again, if we're accepting an, ar an array parameter. And this is how it looks when we're returning an array. We have to specify the type and that it's an array by using those open close brackets. So here I start off numbers, negative 10, 15, negative 20, 25, negative 30. OK, straightforward. And then I have this Boolean um, array called other ARR equals positive numbers. So positives is the name of our method. And numbers is the array we're going to pass it. So we're going to come down here to positives, the method. And again, it expects an array of integers, and that's what it got. It uses the reference ARR, and it's going to point to the same location that numbers is pointing to. Here, it says we're going to create a new array of Boolean values. Um, and you see it says new Boolean, and then in square brackets, ARR.length. So the length of whatever ARR is, is going to be the length of my Boolean. So ARR is pointing to a, an array with a length of 5. So my new array gets 5 values. And it, they're all false because that's the default type for Booleans. Okay. Now it says traverse through ARR one at a time if the element is greater than 0, meaning if the element in ARR is positive, the Boolean in new array, okay, so notice this checks ARR, but then we're going to use the element in new array, okay, at the same location, gets changed to true, okay. So that means that these two, because these are the two numbers that are greater than zero, these are the two elements that are greater than zero at index one and index three. So that means down here at index 1 and index 3, we are going to change those to trues. Okay? 
that's what that whole loop did. I didn't trace through it. I just converted the code basically into words and then did what the code wanted us to do. Okay. And then it returns new array. Okay. So new array references a Boolean. So that's why our return type here is a Boolean array. And I return it back here because this was the method call. And it gets stored in other array. Okay. So notice how this, so new array also pointed here, but new array was a local variable down here. So it goes away. Okay. Same thing with ARR. It was a local variable here, so it goes away. So now when I'm working in the main method, all of the changes, numbers didn't change, but the changes here were preserved. And now it says go through, so this says traverse, traverse through the array. Oh, excuse me, this is supposed to say numbers. My fault. I copy and pasted from the last problem. So it says traverse through numbers <laughs> and print off numbers, space, other and at the um, same index. So I would print numbers element negative 10 and I would print false. Then I would print 15 and I would print true. So on and so forth. And that's what it's gonna look like on the console. Okay. All right. That brings us to the end of our, uh, of our lesson. I appreciate you guys following along on this uh, long video, but thank you for sticking with me and I will see you next time.